Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella and I'm popping in with an update. I haven't talked to you guys in a while. It is May the 26th or 27th, 2019. If you are new to my channel and this is the first time you're seeing this little setup here, I am currently building a forest in my craft room for gnomes and their friends to live in. Um, I, and I do tutorials along the way. Uh, my last tutorial I showed how to build these steps. This is a full tutorial here on my YouTube channel and that should be popping up uh, on your screen. I also have tutorials on how to make the bark and so on. So today I'm working in the kitchen of the gnome home and I'm going to show you a brief um, rundown on how I built the cupboards. But first let's do a little update on the backyard here. Uh, this tree has taken on a few different forms. When I first started it was a tall skinny tree and then I decided I didn't like that so I tore it down, built a big tree and I thought it was just obstructing the view so I tore all that down and then I decided on this uh, design here so it's just a broken down stump that's been sitting here for many many years I recently added a bridge and there's some steps there underneath the bridge is a creek full of fish and I just added some lights the other day these are from the dollar store these are called bottle lights I believe this is supposed to look like a cork and then they have a little light light string attached to it. So at night that looks really cool. Yeah, so that's what I've been building and so I decided to leave this like a broken down stump like I said. There's a little entrance here going into a mysterious place and then down here, and I'm still working on it so forgive that messy there, I'm putting another little pond in here. So I'm just waiting for the resin. I just ordered some on Amazon and then that little pond will spill over I just decided that yesterday, so that's what this is. Here, I still have to add bark here. So it's going to spill over, trickle down here, and then it's going to look like it comes underneath the walkway and goes here. So let's take a look on the other side. So this house is far from done on the inside. I've been working in the bathroom area. And if you haven't been visiting my Facebook page, or if you're not on Facebook, then this will be all new to you. There's a This is Aunt Cutry's ensuite, this little bathroom here. So there's her bedroom over there. And this side of the tree is not done at all. It's still got the masking tape stage, no bark yet. But we have Aunt Cutry's room pretty much set up in there. I still have to add pictures and all that great stuff. And down here is a mess. And then on this side, you can see I'm working on the kitchen. I had originally had this all closed in and there was no opening here so we could only see the kitchen from this side and there used to be a stone floor in there and then the day before yesterday I changed my mind because I've done too many stone floors I thought I'll do something completely different and so I ripped it all out ripped the walls out went to the thrift store and found a checkerboard and that's what this is here and it fit perfectly it's one of those box checkerboards that folds up so I used one half for this little space and it works great so I'm going to have a wall that comes here, and then I'm going to have a little peekaboo area right here. That way we can see into the kitchen and also see uh, the other parts of the house as well. So today I'm going to show you, um, like I said, this is unplanned. I wasn't planning on a tutorial, so it's not like your basic wonderful tutorial. My cupboards are custom made for my little gnome here. Because I have to be pretty short. She's only, how tall is she? <laughs> about three inches tall so her um, height here this all has to be custom made to her same as this little piece over here I made this piece the same way I'm going to show you how I made the cupboards so I started off with the basic height right here that goes well with my little gnome so you can use the same tutorial and do any size of cupboard that you want to make all right my friends we can head over to my desk it was actually filmed yesterday what I'm about to show you was actually filmed yesterday and the rest of the cupboards are going to be built another day when I have a moment to do so. But with what I show you in the next clip, it will give you a good idea how I put these things together. This little setup here. And also how I put this little uh, cupboard together as well. Yeah, so techniques that you can be using for all sorts of different things. Alright, so before we get started, what I'm using in this video is foam board. And it comes in great big sheets. I get it at Walmart and also at the dollar store. You can also use cardboard. You don't need to buy the foam board. I'm using tacky glue. Tacky glue is the best glue to use when you're putting stuff together. I'm also using a little bit of hot glue, but that's not to hold anything together. And I'll explain that later. 
I'm using a burnt umber, regular craft paint, and also a chalk paint. This is an Irish. And a wood filler. You don't need to use wood filler. You can also use a clay, exacto knife, a ruler, a pair of scissors, some paint brushes, and let's get started. All right, before I get too far ahead of myself, I thought I'll stop and show you how I'm building my little cupboards here. I'm using foam board, and I don't like building with foam board. I decided today <laughs> I don't like it at all. I actually would prefer cardboard, but because I started off um, with this piece using the foam board, I decided just to stay with it and go to the end, uh, building all the pieces with the same material. And my little faucet here is a piece of twine. I didn't have any wire thick enough to do the job, so I decided to use this twine. And it'll do the job that I need it to do for now. I just want to get this kitchen built so I can move on to other parts of the house. So I just covered this with glue, just like so. And then I put it on my styrofoam in the shape that I wanted. Use the pin to hold the one side down and a pin to hold the other side down. And then I just set my fan on it and let it dry. And once it was dry, I put a little dab of uh, wood filler. I didn't have any clay on hand. Clay would have done a better job, but I put a little bit of wood filler on the end just to give it a little bit of a faucet look. And then I painted it all with gray. All right, guys, I'm just editing to make it super clear. So the twine I use is just rustic twine that I got at the dollar store. The reason why I pinned it in place after I put the glue on it is because once the glue is dry, then it holds that shape. You can see here. It's held that shape really nicely. So, yeah, you need to let it dry fully. And then once it's dry, you can take the pins out and then cut or trim whatever you need to cut off or trim off there. And I made a hole in the back of my piece, and then I shoved the twine down into that hole and put in a little tacky glue to hold it in place. And I painted it uh, gray and silver. I used a dark gray as a slate first as the base coat. And then on top of that base coat, I used a metallic. And when you use metallic paint, you have to have a base coat first, otherwise it won't show up. So this is wonderful stuff here, and it gave it a nice chrome look to it. For taps, I'm going to be using these paper fasteners. These are metal. I got them off Amazon. These also make great doorknobs as well. They're actually another piece that you would be screwing on the other side, but I'm not using the other side. I'm just going to use this piece here. And I'm just going to attach them temporary because until I can get some proper taps in here, these will do the job. They're a little bit clunky looking, but when you look into the kitchen, they look okay. Just the way they are. And I just... Uh, I, put them on top of two pins that I shoved down into my foam board. There's two stick pins there. And they just sit on top. And when I find some better taps, then I can just take those off and replace them. Alright guys, this is not a full tutorial like I said, but I'm going to give you a brief rundown of what I did. So I cut an L shape, just like so. And then the countertop, I wanted it to stick out a ways, you can see there. So that is two widths, so two of these pieces together, back, and just glue, whoops, I'm going to glue it here, okay, and now I'll do these here, so there's the start of it, that's what I did here, you can see. Okay, and then the other piece went under here. And then I glued this one like this. And then I just uh, glued an end piece here. Now that's exactly how I started this piece here. And this black stuff here, you don't have to worry about that. I'm going to explain why I have that here when I bring the cupboard over to the kitchen. And, yeah, you don't have to worry about this stuff here. I had to add that for a reason. Okay, so the uh, countertop, you want to make sure that you have enough overhang when you put your cupboard face on there, that it will overhang the cupboard face. So just take that into consideration when you're cutting your own pieces, if you do a piece that's similar to this. Once that glue was dry, I used wood filler 
and I just put a thin layer, I'm going to show you how I do it in a second, put a thin layer, and I like the texture of that, you can use clay, uh, this probably wouldn't be the best thing if you're making something for a small child to be playing with, because I think that would just be, in no time at all, would break up and you'd see lots of chips and stuff, but for the purpose that I'm using this for, it's perfect, uh, it's not going to be pulled out, this is actually going to be glued into place, so I'm not worried about it falling apart, it's pretty sturdy as is, this is the top cupboard here, when it's sitting on the wall, this is going to be sitting on this side here. So I've already started, I made the little foam board box, and then I did my wood filler all the way around. I didn't do it on this side because that side's going to be glued to the wall. Now I'm going to make the cupboard face. I'm going to do that on film for you. So it is two inches by three inches. So the cupboard face, like this part here, is going to be a little bit smaller than that two by three. Not too concerned about the edges and stuff because I am putting the wood fill over top. Oh, I think that'll be a good fit right there. Okay, so what I do now is I'm going to add a layer of the wood filler. I've used this wood filler, filler a lot to build um, things like wooden pieces. So this is just going to give me a nicer texture than just having painted over plain foam board or cardboard. To get a nice smooth surface, once you get the wood filler on there, you can dip your finger in water and then run your finger across and it smooths it right out. I did that when I built my little bridge. I smoothed it right out and then I added lines um, with a pet brush, a steel pet brush. And you can get those awesome uh, green lines in there. But I'm not doing that with these cupboards. I'm kind of just giving it a rough look. So now I'm just going to set it under my fan and let it dry. I am popping it with an edit because I was just watching my film and I realized I didn't um, clearly explain. The wood filler only goes on the surface that's going to be seen. I didn't put it on the other side. And you let it fully dry before you paint it. So I set it underneath the fan and let it fully dry and then I painted it. And I do the edges. All the edges get uh, the wood filler as well. And then the surface, but nothing on the back. So this piece here, wood filler went along the whole countertop and went along the whole surface here. All of this down here across. I didn't do any on the side because that part was going to be going to the wall. I didn't worry about that part. But everything else got covered with the wood filler. And of course, you don't need anything on the underside because you're not going to be seeing any of that. And with this basic piece here, all the glue is dry, and when you put the wood filler on there, it becomes pretty solid. That becomes one solid piece. And again, you can use a paintbrush to smooth it out if you wanted to, or use water, like I said, dip your finger in water and smooth it all, all out if you wanted to. I left it, you can see, pretty rough looking. So this bridge here was made exactly the same way I just showed you in how I did the cupboards. So cardboard and then the wood filler over top. I smoothed it out with my finger dipped in water and then I ran a pet brush along to get all those wonderful grain lines in there. So this bridge was built the same way I did the cupboards. And the steps were as well. And you can see on mine I kind of rough it up with that burnt umber. So I'm going to take some of that, get the excess off. I start on the bottom, work my way up. See, so it kind of just gives them look like they've been worn out in that area. And most of this is going to be covered, so I don't have to worry about the middle part. Now, I'm sure a lot of people won't like this look, and that's totally fine. If we all have different ways we want to do things. You might want to make your kitchen look like it's totally brand new and everything looks perfect and that's great too. I'm the opposite of that. I like things that look wonky, that look like they've been around for a while. Just makes my life easier. <laughs> so that piece is done. All right, so now I have to paint this one green, let it dry and then I'll do the same thing. There my piece is all finished. I just finished uh, dirtying it up with that burnt umber. And now it's ready to be glued on top. So I'm just going to use this tacky glue.
And my little handles here are very simple, uh, cut from a cereal box, just a very thin strip. And I just bent the ends, I cut the ends into little triangle shapes and then bent, bent them so they stick out a little bit. Nothing fancy there, but super easy. And I got the original idea for these types of handles from Bentley House Minis. She has a tutorial on YouTube on how to do these um, little tiny handles in all different styles. So what I've done here is a, actually a simplified version of what she does. She decorates the ends and hers look fantastic. And they actually look like little metal handles and yeah, she does a really good job of the tutorial. But like I said, I just did a simple strip and then um, cut the ends. And now I'm just going to glue these. I was surprised how well it holds. I'm going to leave that dry for a few minutes before I uh, put it on the wall. Oh, and I almost forgot. My sink, uh, I was kind of just winging my way along so it, it's a little bit wonky. But I cut the hole in after I had all of this built because I didn't even know where the sink part was going to go yet. So I kind of played around with ideas. And um, yeah, I put it inside the house and checked it all out and decided that's where I wanted my sink. So then I cut that little hole. And then underneath, you can see I just built a little box out of that foam board and glued and taped it into place. And then wood filler over that and then painted. So here's the unfinished room that these cupboards are going into. And I told you I was going to tell you what these black pieces were for. If you take a look at this board here, this is a checkerboard and the middle of it is bowed down. So when I put my pieces in here, I noticed straight away that I could see underneath um, the middle part of my cupboard. And especially if I looked from over here, I could really see an issue here. So what I came up with was just to glue these little black strips here so it creates a shadow. And so when I look in at the cupboards, I don't have to see any light underneath and it looks like they go right to the floor. So that was just an easy solution to a permanent problem that I have with this floor. I'm going to glue this in place. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use hot glue and tacky glue. The hot glue will just hold it up in place while the tacky glue dries because you never want to attach anything with just hot glue because it'll eventually just pop off and then you'll have a problem. I just ran tacky glue along the entire edge there and now I'm going to put hot glue on the side, on this side here. Okay, I ran a bead of hot glue and I want to make sure I'm doing this right where I want it. I think that's the perfect height right there. And see that hot glue just grabbed it right away, which I wanted. And then the uh, tacky glue can dry underneath there, and that will be permanently in place once the tacky glue dries. So that's great. I think that height's good there too. So what I'm going to do now is going to build the other piece. I'm kind of winging my way along, like I said earlier. And I'm not even sure yet what I'm going to be doing over here. I think I might do a corner cupboard because I'm going to have a wall coming on this side here. And then I'll have shelves going across in between them. We'll see what happens. Alright my friends, that brings us to the end of this video tutorial. Even though it wasn't the greatest tutorial, I hope I gave you some ideas and some inspiration. Maybe you get yourself a little bridge made, some stairs, or maybe a set of cupboards. And next time, hopefully we'll have another little creek here filled with some fish for you to see. Yeah, I'll be back soon with more updates. Until then, keep dreaming and keep building. And we'll see you super soon.